Hi everyone, welcome back to River Adventures. Um, this was the alternator that I bought from Amazon, my third one. So when they tested my alternator, see there it is, that's the second generation. I learned some mistakes from my, um, my video. And so um, make sure you look at your alternator, make sure it's the correct one, because I bought three of the second generation of the Ford Explorer one. And so the alternator did pass, but it failed for the first generation. So make sure you do that and everything's good. Hey everyone, I guess welcome back to my station. Uh, something I need to share with you guys that you need to know. When you buy an alternator for your vehicle, make sure you get it tested at AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Napa, Advance, um, uh, advanced auto parts or any road they have an alternator machine that's a legit company I bought three alternators already this month they all failed for my vehicle that I'm gonna be installing in the voltage was too low the voltage was too high the first one failed the second one failed the third one failed so I asked um, AutoZone about my vehicle and my alternator has been discontinued so you people that are Looking for a you know if you guys have a 2000 Ford Explorer the cutoff dates if you have an older one of a 2000 is uh, July 24th of 2000 so um, After that they 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 came out with a newer engine and a new design after July 24th of 2000. So, um, just wanted you to know that I will put in my um, notes and description of the alternators that failed. I didn't get the first one, but I do have the second one and the third one. And so, for you Ford Explorer lovers out there that want to refurbish your alternator, um, I know that's O'Reilly's still carries it advanced auto so you just have to look and shop around but be very wary about buying your alternators from amazon and if you do make sure you have it tested make sure you get the voltage uh diameter for your vehicle for the ford explorer it needs to be between 14.0 to 14.6 to have everything pass uh, the alternator I got ended up being 15.11. It was tested again, and it recorded at 15.14. So if you have it too high, it's going to blow up your engine and mess it up. If you have it too low, it's going to mess up your battery, and you're not going to have enough charge. And um, you're going to just end up replacing the alternator again. And the other thing you need to know about Amazon, since there's no warranty on your alternators, they only give you a 30-day return policy. So when you do buy your alternator, it's as is. Otherwise, you'd have to buy another one and go through the same process again. But when you go through a store and they give you an alternator called a reman, um, a reman is where they rebuild the alternator and put all new parts in it but the case has been refurbished and renewed but but it gives you a one-year manufactured as long as you keep the vehicle and the vehicle is in your name and you don't sell it once you sell it that warranty becomes in void and even if you did get a lifetime warranty as long as you own the vehicle then the warranty stays invalid. That's why they call it one year manufactured warranty or um, one year or, or lifetime limited, lifetime limited. So if you have a lifetime limited warranty and let's say you own the vehicle for the alternator, as long as that manufacturer is um still making it you you got the lifetime warranty if they go out of business and you still have your receipt and all your information 
you know, and you keep all your records, the old-fashioned paperwork way, and keep it in a safe file, the store will give you another alternator that's brand new from another company, as long as they're still making your make and model, and they'll give you something similar to what is in your vehicle. So that's how the warranty works, but you got to keep the paperwork, because if you lose the paperwork... And let's say they lose it in their system and you can't show them that original paperwork with that receipts, you know, you're pretty much um, kind of SOL on the, on the warranty. So technically, now I'm here at Kohl's returning my alternator back to Amazon for the third time. So if you do order an alternator, be very wary, be very careful, have it tested. Make sure it reached that that um, the voltage qualification. Make sure you get a snapshot of your voltage and your your work of the diagnostics, and make sure it passes. But if it fails after thirty days, you got to buy another um, alternator again. So now you know the pros and cons about having a one year manufacturer, a lifetime a man limited lifetime manufacturer. As long as she owned the vehicle and then you know just buying an alternator from Amazon oh and when you do buy an alternator you have to pay a core when you when you pick up your um, your alternator and when you bring back the old alternator they'll give you the core back but at least you have a warranty so you make that determination about your warranty if you want one or if you don't want one and the different types of warranties so I guess that's it for now and uh, be safe out there have a great day thank you for watching please subscribe to my station please share I have 35 subscribers now um, so I would like to go viral someday and um, have a tazzy wazzy day everyone until next time I hope you enjoy watching my videos and have a safe day, everyone. So thanks again. Bye-bye for now. Hey, everyone. Uh, one more thing that I want to mention about getting an alternator for your vehicle because I have a um, 2000 Ford Explorer. So there's, like I said earlier, there's two um, generations. You want to um, count the grooves to see if you have a six groove and an eight groove. So I'll show you what I mean by that on the alternator. Okay, when you want to make sure that you got the right belt for a first, oh. Okay, this is my um, 2000 Ford Explorer, the first generation before they changed the new engine. And so I was talking about the grooves in here. You want to count the grooves on the inside. So technically there's one, two, three, four, five. So there's five grooves in here, okay? So I counted the grooves in the inside of the wheel. And when you look at the belts, I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, let's continue. So anyway, you see the grooves inside there? Let's see here. Okay, so you got... I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four, five. So there's five grooves in there. And also, too, if you're ordering parts from Amazon, you have a 30-day policy return. And also make sure that you put your vehicle in correctly. Make, model what size engine, you know, make sure they match up in, you know, the parts you need for your vehicle. One of the mistakes I made um, is I ordered three alternators from Amazon. When I brought it in to have it tested at AutoZone, all alternators failed due to the wrong alternator that I needed for my vehicle. So make sure 
you match up the alternator with the alternator um, and make sure it's the same one before you purchase it. Mistake, lesson learned. When you're becoming a mechanic, you make mistakes, learn from it, become a better mechanic, learn and grow, ask a lot of questions, and you will get there. Because we all have to start somewhere on the bottom and move our way up. So now I'm going to be ordering my fourth alternator through Amazon and have it tested at AutoZone. Make sure it's working correctly because if you have the first generation uh, 2000 Ford Explorer, the cutoff date is July 24th of 2000. And I believe, um, please look this up. Do your homework, but this is just an educational guess. I think my 2000 Ford Explorer started maybe July of 1999 and went to July of 2000. Because after July 24th of 2000, um, they totally changed the alternator and a whole system and a whole new engine to the new style one. So, you know, check your manual, check your specifications on your 2000 Ford Explorer. Anyway, here's my alternator, first generation. So it's the black one. And um, so I'm going to be, for the first time, this is just for educational purposes. Make sure you watch your other YouTube videos to get educated. If you make any mistakes on your vehicle, I'm not responsible. I'm just learning how to do this myself for the first time. I had to watch a few YouTube videos to learn how to do this. So um, technically, there is a 3.8 wrench pulley down there where you can pull the radiator off. So some of the ideas that I have. Okay, so I got this diagram right here and this is for the alternator pulley right here so your vehicle should have one of these so technically you see how this goes and it comes back around and goes here and goes down again and up one of the DIY uh, ideas I have for you ADD lovers is before you take the belt off and once you take this cover off so this is the first generation 2000 Ford Explorer. So this is an eight millimeter. There's four eight, four eight millimeters here. So you want to pop this off and then um, get a flathead screwdriver. Loosen this right here. Um, you want to loosen that. And um, step number two, make sure you put a color coded line right here. So you match it up. So before you take this off, you want to put one color here and a different color here. So you want to go to the art store and buy those paint markers. This, you don't really have to take off. All you have to do is just open up these clamps here just to pop this whole piece off. So you just move this piece right here in this spot here. So, you know, and then um, just when you pop this to make sure you put it back on the same place, you might maybe want to mark a red marker here and maybe a blue marker here so you know where spots go. And when 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 you have this off, you want to put the screws back in the slot so you don't lose it. You don't lose any of your screws. You just put the, the bolts back in here after you have the cover taken off. And, um, and then to get to, um, to the pulley here, because it has five groups, like I told you earlier. You just want to draw the line and draw this diagram right here. So you're going to be drawing your marker around on the engine, underneath the wheel. Go back up, draw your line all the way around with your paint marker. You want to go past this and go back around again and just follow the belts. 
and go down here on the bottom and make sure you follow it exactly and bring it back up so you want to put this around the pulley so you want to make sure this is on the outside because this is your pulley right here because there's a pulley kit so you want you'll be replacing this part and I believe you're gonna be uh, for your pulley kit let's see here um alternator alternator kit you're gonna be replacing this piece right here for your kit this piece right here and the belt so when you do your alternator uh, you want to change your alternator make sure you get the correct one have it tested out at AutoZone or any uh, of your mechanic store shops that's legit and so you want to replace the alternator wheel the alternator pulley the alternator uh, belts make sure you keep your old parts don't throw that away just in case of emergency backup and you want to keep your old belts just in case of emergency backup just to have as uh, a backyard mechanic um what i learned from one of my instructors um automotive instructors thank you from washington also a good dear friend of mine he told me when you replace your alternator, you want to put the same one back in. That you, What I've learned at this moment in time, you don't want to do an upgrade. You just want to keep it original. Um, but you can, you can uh, upgrade the, the battery and you can put a little bit bigger battery. So it's equal amp hours for whatever the vehicle is so whatever this one is i don't know what the number is you want to look up the specifications and having the cold crank amp hours you can upgrade it a little bit to some degree and you can put a little bit bigger battery in here for the cold cranking amp hours equal to equal and you can bring it up a little bit to upgrade the battery so yes, you can add a little bit bigger battery, but you want to stay within the guidelines of what is equal to the upgrade capacity, and you don't want to go past that capacity. So you want to stay in that range. So like if you have cold cranking amp hours, the, let's say this is the one for this model for 650 for the equal minimum you can bring it up a little bit and put a little bit bigger battery in here and you want to double check and do your education do your homework on upgrading the battery and making it a little bit bigger not much but just you can upgrade it to a little bit bigger so you have a little bit more power um, the battery's a little bit bigger, so it's going to last a little bit longer. But you don't want to go past that capacity. And I'm not sure what those specs are until I get educated more about it. But that's all I know from, from now. Equal to equal and equal to upgrade for cold cranking amp hours. So um, you can learn about that on YouTube. You know, get educated about it. And... Um, so so and um make sure you ask a lot of questions before you attempt it you know do your um homework so you can learn about it because if you make any mistakes that's the mistakes that you make and you learn from that and grow from that so i'm just sharing what i have learned so far and you can call me a student student backyard mechanic so anyway, there's uh, my engine. I also got to replace the fan that I'm going to be doing um, a YouTube video on. Because the fan is cracked in here. It's not completely broken, but it's, it's cracked in here. So that's going to be replaced. And if you want to learn about um, learning how to change your uh, fan, there are YouTube videos on how to change the fan in your... Uh, first generation 2000 Ford Explorer 
Um, so you, you all you have to do is just you know watch those uh, legit um, YouTube um, videos so you can have an idea how to change it. So pretty much you're gonna need a breaker bar. So first of all to change your um, your alternator fan you need a breaker bar and what I have is adjustable wrench. So you know you need a um, 12 inch adjustable wrench, one of those big ones, and then just put a big breaker bar on the end to give you more leverage so you can be able to uh, uh, turn it. And there's instructions on there that will be put out on a later date for that video. Um, but anyway, that's it for now, and thanks again. Thank you for watching River Adventures. Please have a great day. Be safe out there. Please, please like and subscribe. Until next time, thank you for supporting my channel. Have a great day.